Uh, well, my father was a land surveyor. So I started working for him when I was a kid. He, I would go out work with him for the afternoon. And he'd slip me a couple bucks and, and, and then I, I'd go off and play wiffle ball in the backyard after that. And I just, you know, throughout high school, I worked for him. And um, then I went off to school, um, took a little bit of time off in between and uh, ended up at the University of Maine. Got my four-year degree in surveying engineering. And my father wanted to retire. He'd worked hard all his life, so I took over in 1985. At that time, we were offering engineering services and, we, and also land planning services. And we said, let's go back to doing what we do best. We're land surveyors. That's where we started from. That was our roots. We run from like the lower end gamut there up to 3,000 acre survey on the uh, New Boston Air Force Base. We did surveys at all the border crossings in Maine, New Hampshire, and Vermont. We do work for a Portland Pipeline Company in Maine, New Hampshire, and Vermont. And everything in between, too. We do a lot of highway work. We've done a lot of work on the Maine Department, on the Maine Turnpike. And we have a survey crew that works pretty much nonstop for the Maine Department of Transportation year round. Back when we had a lot of financial difficulties back in the 1980s, we were almost solely invested in the residential market. And when that residential mar market crashed, we crashed. But now by having this wider variety of residential, commercial, and uh, municipal, state, that whole bigger basket gives us greater uh, financial stability. Uh, and quite honestly, it's more fun. It's, it's, it's fun to have a variety of work to work on. I've always wanted to stay on top of the heat technologically because we have to set ourselves apart from the one-person survey outfits out there. In order to do that, we have to offer more services, and a lot of that's just through technology. So by having a broad scope of GPS equipment and the MS-60, so we have the ability to scan it on, and we have nothing but robotic instruments here now, so we can we can use one person or two person, depending on what the situation is. You know, in the past, there used to be a survey cruise where always like three people. You went out with three people. And now it's two people. You never get a three person crew. I mean, very, very rarely do you ever have a three person crew. And the customary is two people, and now you can go out and do one person. So, I mean, that kind of frees up people to take on more workload. Honestly, the GS 18 has been fantastic. Just the fact that we can now get the, the L5 signal and the larger band of constellations of GPS, we're getting into places now that you could never would have thought about getting into. I remember when we first did GPS, you couldn't even stand underneath the telephone wire without the signal being disrupted. And we just recently did a survey in an area that was, it was nasty. It was a lot of undergrowth and it would have taken us two weeks to, with a two-person field crew to get through there with it. I walked out into that swamp before we started, and I started looking up. I said, you know, I think we can do this with GPS. I had one with me. I said, sure enough, I, I was locked, it was fixed, great results. I said, I'm going to try it. So I sent two guys down there with two GPS units. And when I turned around and I told them, I said, hey, we've got this done in two days, and, and I thought it was going to be two weeks, they're thrilled. And we told them how, and they said, wow, that's fantastic. Uh, so we'll definitely keep you in mind for many more of these crunch projects. It's really paid off quite a lot for us to have the technology available. So that was huge for us. And, uh, and safety is a huge issue too with this stuff, uh, like the MS-60 with the scanning capability in it, uh, which is also our best robotic instrument that thing is amazing. It's so quick and uh, we never lose lock with that thing. If we're at a really busy intersection where, um, where, where you, it's tough to do lane closures, or even if you do a lane closure, you, you know, you've got people driving by with the texting and you're never safe on the highway anymore. If you were to scan an intersection with an MS-60, you have all the data available to you and you can extract any feature you need to, it's there. And it's so sensitive that it picks up the striping even, the, the thickness of the paint. So that's helped us to not have to get out into an open road and order a road closure for no reason. Keeps my guys out of the middle of the road and it 
towards a way safer situation. It's definitely opened some new doors. Uh, we've had a prospective clients call us and say, do you do scanning? And you can tell right then and there, if we had said no, that would have been the end of it. The phone would call would have ended and no opportunity. But now we can say yes. And so even though the job may or may not pan out, we might have gotten another job from them that did work out. Um, so just having that, having that checkbox, so to speak, has actually gained us, I think, quite a few more clients just because they know we have the capability. Even if they don't need it right then and there, just the fact that we can do it um, has worked out. And that's where the MS-60 fills a nice little void for us because we know that it's not built to do large-scale scanning projects, but it does what we need it to do. We were doing a highway bridge and we used the MS-60 to scan the bridge to get uh, abutment seat heights and other features of the bridge and the highway below it. And so I had processed it, the data traditionally. I extracted features from the point cloud, put them into CAD, created a plan. So to the client, it initially didn't look like we used the MS-60, uh, but they said, hey, did you happen to scan this? We were able to offer it and they were excited about using the point cloud for that and that immediately became more valuable to them. Having access to the whole data set, not just what I extracted from it. Um, and the fact that we had it, it was in our back pocket, ready to give to them, um, that was great. If we give our clients crummy data, and it's not accurate, and they build this project off the top of the information that we provided to them, the project crumbles. We're liable, and we lose a client, but if we can consistently keep providing that great information accurately, timely, we develop these great relationships with our clients and they can rely upon us and there's a solid foundation. Leica is definitely on the breaking edge of, of a lot of technology in the survey world. Yeah, ever since my father bought the first build equipment and the Leica equipment that's followed, there's always been a huge level of trust with that equipment that it was going to consistently give us great information and be reliable. That's one of the things where we just trust Leica basically to have that technology squared away. We don't have to think about that. Sending a crew someplace with reliable GPS and a reliable total station and all the other tools that they need, I know they're going to get things done and they're not gonna get there and go, oh gee, the total station wouldn't turn on, or the, or the GPS doesn't work here. So, it pays for itself right there. Captivate software is fairly intuitive. You can kind of just figure it out pretty quickly. In fact, we've had guys come here that have worked at other offices and have used other equipment, and then they start using the Leica equipment in the field, and it's, not only, they've told me how much better the Leica equipment has been than the XYZ brand of surveying equipment. Well, all the software for Leica and the GS18, the MS60, everything is very easy to learn. I mean, it's whether it's you're a summer intern or someone, who just, or we just bought the new piece of equipment. Within a, using it a time or two, you pretty much got it. For, at least all the general basic applications that we use, you've got that down within a couple of times of using it because everything they're all basically the same you might have to click on a little different button here or there but it's pretty much all the same thing so the learning curve is very minimal on them even if you're starting from brand new and you haven't ever used one before it's very easy to learn we do have situations where we have clients that will call us in the morning and say i'm really sorry but i'm you know we had this situation happen and can you come out here and take care of it for us by having all those tools here in the shop, we don't. We could tell people, yes, we can do that. We have enough people, enough knowledge, enough flexibility to generally jump on those projects and get them done for our clients. We're giving them the product quicker, but now they're expecting it that all the time. Um, but that's okay. We're okay with bringing up the bar, so to speak. That makes us stand out from the crowd. 
if guys stop and think about their business for a little bit and think, instead of thinking, oh my God, that's a lot of money to buy that piece of equipment. If they stop and they think, well, if I bought that piece of equipment, I could do this with it. And by doing this, I can do it in half the time that it took me before. And I can hire half the people that I had before because now I've got robotic instruments and a, and a GPS unit. And I can send guys out by one person. And plus, it's not easy to find good help. And I know I have good equipment, so it solves that problem as well. It's the whole picture to me, the fact that you can gather information quickly, efficiently, and accurately that puts it all into the, into the big picture and makes it all work. It's a beautiful thing.